Hello po, good afternoon. Let's wait for the other spot. I'll start at 1.05, around 1.05 p.m. Po. So um, for the afternoon session, we will be discussing sub substructure works plus uh, reporting. We will pro proceed with the calculation of the whole structure and then mag quiz po tayo. All right, so we might finish exactly at 3 p.m. Po. Ilang po, salamat. Um, we have a total of 67 participants. Kanina po around 80 ata tayo or 70. I'm not, I'm not sure. Siguro, final check. No, Just type present if you're here on the, on the uh, Zoom room already. You're ready and we can proceed na po. All right, so um, I think most of us are, are present already. Um, I won't be waiting for the others po, no? baka kasi uh, matagalan sila. And uh, it's already past 1 p.m., so maybe we can start. So um, for our modeling, for our uh, afternoon session, we will be discussing the substructure works. Okay? So yung substructure works po natin, this is composed of three categories. Okay, And all of this will be discussed in approximately an hour, isang oras po natin i-discuss yung tatlong ito. Okay? Naming the foundation, the blinding, and the excavation. So yung mga foundation elements natin in our structure, they are, they are relatively easy. No? Madali, lang po sila, madali lang po tayo mag-model ng foundation. If you know how to model columns, if you know how to model slabs, okay na po yun. Sapat na po yun for foundation modeling. All right, so let's continue. Let's continue. So um, now I will go to my task software. Punta tayo sa task software natin. And ito na po yung pinaka nagawa natin. I'll just show you. Ito po yung mga nagawa natin. So ganyan po itsura nung nagawa natin. Now, um, magpo-proceed na po tayo sa substructure works, no? sa ilalim, sa foundation. So what I will do is this. From the ground floor, I will switch to foundation floor. Please remember, no, switch to foundation floor para hindi tayo magkamali. Switch to foundation floor. Now, um, magkaroon lang po tayo ng konting review. Just a small review of the drawing management. Okay, so wala po kasi tayong foundation plan here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Wala po tayong foundation plan, plan here. So I will upload a new plan, foundation plan po. So pupunta lang tayo dito. This one. Okay. And then, mag-upload po tayo ng foundation plan. Okay. But this time, this time, kasi di ba dati ang in-upload po natin is CAD file. CAD file. Try naman natin is PDF. Let's try to upload a PDF plan. Okay. So punta po tayo sa vector PDF. Outside the basic training drawing 2019 folder, I will upload a vector PDF. 
Okay, so uh, siguro para maiba naman po yung example natin. And I will upload, under the structural drawing, I will upload yung page, um, let's see, meron ba tayo? Page 4, no? File cap details. Okay. And then press open. Magpapakita po yan sa pinakailalim. Okay? But when you open the file cap details, for sure po, hindi yan nakascale properly. We are uploading PDF, so hindi po yan nakascale properly. Masyado pong maliit. If you zoom in here, masyado po yung maliit. Ito po yan. Masyadong maliit. So ang gagawin ko po is ganito lang, no? I will scale first. Okay, I will scale first. Tuturuan po po ulit kayo kung paano mag-scale, no? Press this button, scale. Highlight the whole area. Release your left button. Right click to confirm. Right click to confirm. And then, select two points with known distance. Okay, select two points with known distance. So for example, from here, hanggang dito po. Bakit ito po yung sinelect ko? Kasi alam ko po yung distance ito. And the distance of this is 4475. Okay? And I will type, kasi ang actual distance daw niya is 24.6 mm lang. Masyadong maliit. No? I will make it 4475. Okay? And then just press OK po. Mapapansin nyo, lalaki na yung drawing natin. If you zoom out, Malaki na yung drawing natin. And lastly, ang gagawin ko na lang po is I will relocate it. I will relocate it. I-align ko na lang po sa ating grid axis. Hindi ko na po kailang i-split, no? Kasi po, wala na po akong ibang plano na present dito. Okay? So, ang gagawin ko na lang po is i-relocate ko na lang siya. Relocate. And then drag. Okay, so yan po, naka-align na po yung ating file caps. Okay, yung ating file caps sa ating plano. Right, so we will be modeling file caps po for this basic training. Okay, ulitin ko lang po, na ulitin ko lang para po uh, ma makuha natin. Uh, medyo mabilis po ata yung pagkaturo ko kanina. Again, from the drawing manager, add drawing. Tapos po, punta tayo sa training material folder po. Ito po, training material folder. Double click vector PDF. Okay? Instead po na CAD, para maiba lang, vector PDF po tayo. Then PDF. And then structural. Sa structural po yung, yung file caps natin and page 4. Page 4. And press open. After uploading, nasa ilalim na po yan. Double click. And then scale. First, masyadong maliit. Scale first. How do I scale? Ulitin ko lang po. How do I scale? Select the scale button. Highlight the area. Highlight the area po to scale. Right click to confirm. Right click to confirm. And then, choose a line. Choose two points with known distance. So for example, gusto kong i-scale, no? Itong 4, 4, 75. So I will choose two points here. One. Two. Tapos po, sinasabi ni software kung ano yung actual distance niyan. And the actual distance is only 24.6 mm. I will correct the software for 475 po. And press OK. So may scale na po siya properly. And lastly, again, we will relocate. We will relocate kasi po hindi na natin kailangang split kasi isa na lang po yung plano natin. So left click on the drawing papunta po sa grid axis. Okay, so yan na po yung ating um, drawing management for our file cap. So I suggest guys, pakigawa rin po. No? Try to upload the vector PDF file cap, page 04, and then do the drawing management. Okay, so yun lang po. No? I'll just wait for you guys. Kung nalilito po kayo sa pag-scale, pakisabi po so that I can repeat ulit. Okay, wala pong problema. Maraming salamat po.
Uh, just a reminder, no? just a reminder. Kapag po gumamit tayo ng PDF, you assume, no? you, uh, um, tawag dito, you expect na hindi po palaging sobrang exact skill yan. Okay? There are small discrepancies, no? Kasi minsan meron tayong uh, tawag dito, um, meron tayong human errors, kumbaga, sa pag-print ng PDF. Let's say, for example, this one, nag-scale ako, proper naman yung pag-scale ko kanina, pero hindi po super aligned. It's not perfectly normal sa PDF file, sa hindi super duper aligned, no? Kasi po, um, we know how sometimes the drawing is imperfect, okay? Especially on PDF, especially on scanned files, especially on images. So we have to work around with this kinds of imperfection. And honestly, yung mga malilit na difference naman, it won't vary that much. No? It won't vary that much kung sobrang liit. Or better yet, kung gusto nyo pong ayusin, i-rescale nyo lang po ulit. No? I-rescale nyo na lang. I can just rescale again. Okay? Rescale ko lang ulit siya. But again, um, if the drawing is really not that perfect, wala na tayong magagawa. Ganyan po talaga siya. No? Especially mga pictures. Okay? So i-rescale ko ulit siya. No? So, 12,875. Ayan. Ito, nakalay na siya. No? Nakalay na siya. So, ibig sabihin, medyo bitin yung 4,475. Okay? So, you, you just have to be familiarized, no? Or you just have to to be cautious, no? In using PDF or uh, scan files. So, we expected that kind of uh, scenarios po. <coughs> Now, um, what we will do right now is to model the pile caps. Okay, so yung structure natin, really speaking, two-story, naka-piles, no? naka-pilote. Uh, it's a project from other country. So we will only model pile caps, but don't worry, no? don't worry, because the modeling of other structures, the other uh, elements, isolated footing, matte footing, they are all the same. Parehas lang po yan. Okay. So I will only show you pile caps pero siguro mamaya ipi-preview ko rin paano po mag matte footing. Kasi yung matte footing po is just drawing a slab. Isang malaking slab lang siya na makapal. So don't worry about this po. Don't worry about this. Now, I just want to view my foundation plan. Make sure sa foundation po meron na kayong column. Okay? So that meron pong pagdidikitan yung pundasyon natin. Okay? The columns in your foundation are not automatic you have to model or copy the columns from the ground floor po. So, nagawa na po natin yan kanina. Now, um, to model rectangular, gawin na natin tatlo. Normal, rectangular, rotated, and yung irregular. So, three examples. But um, actually, naturo na natin ito ng column. Ulitin ko lang po ulit. No? Let's try to model a rectangular pile cap. So I will go to, under the foundation. I will go to pile cap. Okay? I will go to pile cap. And then afterwards, after I go to pile cap, pupunta po ako sa element list. No? Punta tayo sa element list and we will create a rectangular pile cap. Very easy. And then after that, alam niyo na po yung gagawin. Rename your pile cap, P2. Not C1, no? C1 po kasi yung column. No? So P2 tayo. And the section dimensions can be found on the right side po. May table po tayo dito. So for P2, it's 1050 by 450 by 500. Okay? It's 1050 by 450 by 500. So just type the section dimensions. And then to draw it, Draw and point command. Same as column. Same as column. Okay? Tapos po, snap nyo na lang po on the location. Snap on the location. You can press F4 to change your insertion point po. Ayan. Okay? Pwede natin i-position sa bandang taas, no? Again, we know that there is there are some sort of discrepancy sometimes kasi po, uh, we're dealing with PDF. But of course, uh, I want to uh, to uh, consider this type of plan para po mas realistic. Siyempre, hindi naman palaging CAD yung nakukuha natin. So that's it. I already modeled my 
file cap. Ito po yung file cap natin. Automatic po yan, didikit yan sa pinaka floor bottom elevation. The same elevation as your uh, bottom soffit ng inyong column. Okay? So, ganun lang po. No? Parang nag-column lang tayo. Ulitin ko lang po. Ulitin ko lang po. No? Let's try to model another rectangular column, P2. Okay? Same procedure po. Kung wala pa kayo nagagawa, just go to pile cap, create a rectangular pile cap, and edit the dimensions and the name. Okay? Based on the table from the side, no? from the right side. Now, if, you, if we know the, the properties of sections, no? of dimensions, we know that these are public attributes. Hindi po natin pwedeng i-switch, no? i-switch yung mga dimension. Hindi po natin pwedeng i-switch yung mga dimension basta-basta kasi lahat sila susunod. Okay, just like we tackled yesterday. So what I will do here is I will use the rotation point. Okay, if I use the point command, I can turn on the rotation point po. So kung natatanda niyo po kahapon, nag-rotation point tayo, itututok lang natin sa P2 and I will just press F4. Okay, first point, then iikot ko po. Second point. And that's it. Meron na po akong P2. Na nakatayo. Alright? Isa pong nakahiga, isang nakatayo. Kapag, hindi, kapag pinag-switch ko po ito, no, ito yung magiging problema natin. Lahat sila sasabay. That's why we need to use the rotation command no, just to bypass this public attribute na behavior po. Okay? So that is our first example po. So I'll just give you a few minutes, guys. Baka mabilis lang nyo lang po mamodel ito. Try to model P2. Okay? P2 horizontal, P2 vertical. Tapos po, gagawa tayo ng mga irregularly shaped file caps like P3. Okay? So yun lang po. If you have questions, chat me lang para po mag-guide na namin kayo. Salamat po. Um, same concept naman po ang FTB kay BIM ano po. Yes, correct. Same concept lang po yan. Actually, I have a structure called ground BIM. No? Ground BIM for foundation uh, BIMs. No? But I don't usually recommend this. Don't use ground BIM if you want to uh, incorporate footing tie BIMs on your structure. Why? Because ground BIMs, it functions like a non-structural, non-frame BIMs. Kung baga parang patungan lang ng mga CHB. Okay? If you want a frame, no? a footing I beam na may talagang frame rebar reinforcements, I'll just use beam. Magmamodel na lang po ako ng beam para i-connect yung mga columns natin. Okay, so um, how about the others po? Nagawa naman po ba yung... Pile caps, no? Pile caps. So, uh, just another tip. Just another tip. Sir, gusto ko isolated footings, no? Gusto ko ganito, ganyan. Um, gusto ko, um, gusto ko gumamit na isolated kasi wala po akong pile cap. Hindi po tayo gumagamit ng pile cap. Most probably sa mga low-rise building dito. So, how do I manage it? If I, if you were to ask me, gagamit na lang rin po ako ng pile cap for isolated footings. Why? Because po yung properties ng pile caps ko, looks rectangle 
even the riba reinforcements, they are the same. Parehas lang rin po sila ng bakal. Okay? Maski pile cap po yan, maski isolated footings. If I will draw a pile cap here on the side, so kunwari ganyan po yung pile cap ko, even an isolated footing, ang bakal niya is most probably going to be like this. May bottom bars ako dyan, tapos meron ako transverse bars. Okay? I have the option later on to put hook if necessary. And kung may bakal sa taas, ganun din po. So kumbaga, mesh pattern along X and Y and top at top and bottom po. Ganun po yung mga bakal usually mga isolated footings. Okay? If you want, you can put rebars on side as well. So kumbaga, lahat po ng options sa pile caps, pwede nating lagyan or tanggalan ng bakal. So this pile cap element is very flexible. I suggest if you were to model a uh, normal small structure, just use pile cap for the isolated footing. It doesn't matter. The quantity is the same. The rebar information is the same. The formworks is the same. So, kumbaga, pangalan lang po yung nag-iba. Okay, so that's my uh, tip. No? That's my tip. Now, um, let's proceed. Let me just proceed po sa isang example. My last example. So, my last example is the custom pile cap. So, if you notice, meron po tayong irregular looking pile cap here. Okay? And if you have irregular isolated footings na may ibang shape, you may use the custom pile cap element po. So, uh, under the element list, just click the custom pile cap. Okay? So if you click the custom pile cap, what this will do is, it won't ask you for the dimension. It's very hard to explain. It's very hard to, uh, to interpret the dimension merely by just numbers. No? Kasi po iba iba yung shape, no? The software will just ask you for the thickness. Thickness na lang muna. Okay? Let's say our thickness of pile cap or P3 is 550. Sabi po sa plano, 550. So I'll just type 550. Okay? Now, I will use the line command to trace the edges of my pile cap. So I can just trace it para po hindi na ako mag-specify ng dimension. Ititrace ko na lang siya para po makuha ko yung shape ng pile cap tree. If you're done, just press right click and activate na po siya. Okay, so ulitin ko lang po, no? Pile cap tree, use the line command. Use the line command and then just trace. Trace lang natin. Sorry, I forgot pala ng pangalan, no? But for now, trace lang natin. And press right click to confirm. So may pile cap tree na po ako. So, pangalanan ko lang, change ko lang po yung name no? para po uh, tama. Double click ko lang po ito. File cap 3, P3 po. Okay? Now, sir, kailangan ko ba talaga may drawing isa-isa kasi masyadong marami, ganyan, no? Pwede naman, gawin nyo na lang, i-copy nyo na lang. So, select the file cap, right click and copy, and then i-paste na lang po sa iba, no? So, paste na lang here. Paste na lang sa iba. Para po hindi na kayo trace ng trace. Kung parehas naman yung, yung tag, no? and parehas na rin po yung shape, just paste it para po mas less hassle tayo. Alright, so yun lang po yung pile cap tree and that will be the last example for our foundation elements. So try lang po natin yung pile cap tree, custom pile cap. And later on, kung may time po tayo, I will show you yung raft foundation or the mat footing if necessary. Alright, maraming salamat po.
All right. So uh, that's it for our uh, topic regarding yung pile caps. Um, if ever lang po gusto nyo ng Math Foundation, you can go to Raft Foundation lang po. Raft Foundation. Tapos create lang kayo ng Raft Foundation and define the thickness. Okay? If you know how to drop custom pile cap, itrace nyo na lang rin po just like slabs, no? So ganun lang po yung Math Foundation. Ititrace nyo lang po siya. Nyare isang malaking mat foundation to ito trace lang and that's it. Okay? Parang slab lang po siya. Don't worry about the rebar detailing. I will discuss it siguro kapag nagana tayo no. Nag TRB session po tayo. So that's pretty much it for our uh, footings, okay? I will now proceed to the second part of our um, modeling. Actually meron pa po pala no. We need to do the auto identification. Okay, so kasi po ang ginawa natin is manual method. I just did manual method. We will do the auto-identification of pile caps. Pwede rin po. And for the auto-identification, it is only available on pile caps for now. Sa foundation elements po. So ang gagawin ko lang is I will delete everything, highlight everything and delete. I will also delete the element list. And I will proceed to identification commands. Okay, identification commands. So I'll go to identify and I will just do the three-step auto-identification just like columns. Okay, just like columns, we will do the three-step identification. Big sideline, big label, auto-identify. Big sideline, big label, and auto-identify. Now, remember that we are using PDF plans. Okay, we are using PDF plans. And what is the difference between PDF plans and uh, CAD files? Ang difference po niyan yung pag-print ni PDF. Kapag nag-print po yan ng text, nag-convert ng text, they are set of lines. No? You see, they are, they are set of lines that are interconnected with each other. It's not necessarily drawings. No? They are set of lines. Okay? And kapag set of lines po, hindi alam ni software kung anong klaseng letter or anong classing number yan. That's why we need to include or we need to add another step. Okay? Yung isang step na po na yun is to identify the text first. Okay? So magiging parang 3 plus 1 step po tayo. So ipakita ko lang po. Ano? Ipakita ko lang. Just a refresher. Ginawa na po natin ito before. Pick sideline. Select the sideline of your pile cap. Make sure that you are on a select by layer mode. So select the sideline and right click to confirm. Pick label. Just pick the label of your pile cap. No, don't pick C6 kasi column po ito. So pick the green one, the P. Okay, the piece. And then right click to confirm. And then before you press auto identify, you know, sa, kasi sa software natin, sa CAD. So, sa CAD auto-identification, pwede na mag-auto-identify kagad upon checking. For the text auto-identification or the PDF auto-identification, I mean, you need to go to the pick layer. Punta muna tayo ng pick layer and turn off the original layer just to check first. And then, ito po yung step. No? This is the proper step. You will expand the layer manager. Expand yung po yung layer manager. Turn off the pick layer Okay? And just find yung pile cap label. Pile cap label lang po. Kailangan nyo po i-filter lahat ng text regarding pile cap only. Okay? Oops. Um, check natin. Ito pala, pile label. Ayan, pile cap label. So you just have to filter them out. So bakit po natin kailangan i-filter? Okay? Because we will do another step called identify text wherein we will let the software attempt to read all these lines, all these connected lines that forms our text. Okay? So ang gagawin natin is we will activate only the pile cap label. Tapos po, pupunta tayo sa identify. Okay? Identify and then identify text. After that, select nyo lang identify text and highlight. Highlight the whole text and press right click. So ang gagawin ni software is tatry niya pong basahin. Okay? Pwede niyo po i-search one by one no? or tingnan one by one kung tama yung pagkakabasa ni software. 
the accuracy the accuracy of the software is of course dependent on the quality of the drawing and also dependent on how often you use the text identify so kung gumagamit po kayo palagi ng text identify you will most probably have a correct uh, correct interpretation po so nag-adjust natututo kasi si software natututo po si software if you're done just press confirm confirm and that's the time that you will press auto identify so meron na po tayong file caps ayan meron na po tayong file caps the file caps are automatically identified for us just remember po again the quality of the pdf is some is sometimes no sometimes not as accurate as cad cad files po so makikita natin sir bakit may p2 dash 1 tas may p2 kasi po nakita niya na may difference po kasi ng dimension yung p2 sa ka p2 dash 1 see there is a 20 mm difference kaya hiniwalay niya po ng pangalan so there are times no there are times that meron po nga uh, um um differences in dimension si software po ang ginagawa niya is hinihiwalay niya yung pangalan the software renames the plans again okay dash 1 or dash 2 so yun lang po yun lang po yung topic natin for auto identification i just did what we have uh, done yesterday sa columns kaya lang instead of sa cad file ginawa ko po sa pdf para matutunan po rin po natin okay so, siguro ulitin ko lang po ulit one last time, no? Faster uh, faster in uh, in phase, no? Para po mas uh, maintindihan natin. I'll just delete everything again. Now, first is under identify, make sure that you don't have any model, any ent any entity or any element in your element list. Go to identify, pick sideline and then just select the sideline of your file cap. Right click to confirm. Pick label, select the label of your pile cap, right click to confirm. Then afterwards, go to the pick layer, turn off the original layer, and find the pile cap label. You will sort the pile cap label. Po. Then next is press identify text and highlight the whole area. Po. Right click to confirm. This is the time wherein you can check if all the texts are properly identified. If everything's uh, identified perfectly, press confirm and press auto identify po. And after that po, magkakaroon na tayo ng file caps in our model. Okay, so yun lang po yung uh, practice natin regarding file caps, regarding foundation. Um, I'll just give you guys time to do the auto identification using PDF and then we will proceed with the um blinding the second part of our foundation elements okay so yun lang po if you have questions feel free to chat me para po may ma, ma ano ko po no ma address ko siya yun lang po marami yung thickness daw po ba ng file cap is na-identify ni software or um, nag-assume siya? That's a good question. Actually po, nag-assume siya si software. Kapag po hindi natin pinrovide yung elements sa element list, nag-assume siya. Okay? Ang ginagawa niya po is this. Go to identification options. You will find here, under the file caps, kapag wala pong uh, nakalagay, the automatic height will be be 500. So ang gagawin niyo na lang po on your end since sa model na ni software, if kailangan pong baguhin, edit na lang natin attribute editor po. Okay, so kung di siya 500, just edit manually yung mga attributes natin sa attribute editor. Since uh, dimension is a public attribute, you don't have to select every file cap one by one po. Um, pwede po ba mag-import na Excel sa footings? Yes, pwede po. No? Under identify, you can import element schedule. So again, um, 
what we will do is this, no? I'm sorry, under the draw pala, you will press element schedule. I can even identify element schedules, no? Element schedule and then highlight ko po parang sa doors and window, i-identify ko lang siya. Pwede rin po. Ang problema lang po dito, no? Remember, ang problema lang po dito. So, number one, kapag nag-tabulate po tayo, hindi kaya ni software yung mga irregular uh, shape, no? Only rectangle. So, kunyari, itong P3. 1050 by 970. Iasyon po niya na rectangle yan. Where in fact, irregular po yung P3 natin. So, just take note of that. If you want to upload an Excel, make sure that rectangular, no? Or yung simple shape lang po yung i-upload natin. Second one, pag naka-Excel tayo, ay naka-PDF tayo, again, you need to use the text identify. Highlight nyo po. Okay. So for example, meron po kasi mga values na hindi na intindihan sa software. Like this one, no? Tinry niyang basahin, no? Tinry niyang basahin ng horizontal pero vertical lang siya. So you will change it siguro to 500. Okay? This one is 1, 2. Actually, hindi pa hindi siya ganun ka-accurate, lalo na kapag dikit-dikit. So you, you might need to use the text identify po. Um... Pwede po ba mag-incorporate ng quantity if may foundation na may waterproofing? So, kung foundation na may waterproofing, lalagyan po natin yan ng finish, ng waterproofing finish. Pero kung integral, uh, integrated po yung waterproofing, what I suggest is you classify your foundation element as yung material siguro, i-classify nyo na lang po siya as a, uh, as a unique element. No? Kanyari, um, concrete type. No? Concrete type. Gawin nyo na lang po sigurong waterproof concrete para po alam nyo yung volume nung lalagyan nyo ng waterproofing. Okay? So, sir, paano po palabasin ulit yung layout ng um, foundation kasi nawala po yung outline, yung label na lang po yung natira. Ibig sabihin po, pag nawala yung outline, yung label na lang natira, na-identify nyo na po siya. Okay? Nagawa nyo na po yung pick axis. Because kasi po, ang, ang nangyayari po kasi, every time you do the auto-identification, every time you do the identification steps, pag nawala po yung sideline, ibig sabihin po, na-absorb na ni software. So what you will do is this. Go to pick layer. Check nyo lang po. Okay? Check nyo lang po yung pick layer. Tapos po, tingnan nyo kung meron pong mga sideline na. So kung may mga sideline na yan, no need to pick the sideline kasi natapos na po natin. Now, if you, kung nagkamali po kayo, you can use the restore PCAD entity. Okay? This function will let you deselect, no? release the ones you selected previously. So just select the ones you selected previously using the restore PCAD entity and then press right click. So mawawala po ulit yan going back to the original layer for you to repick it again. Alright? So, yun lang po, no? Kung nawawala, either nasa pick layer lang yan or nasa original layer. It depends on the state of the line. Wala rin po siyang outline pag nag-restore PCAD entity. Um, I-ask ko lang po kung nag-restore PCAD entity kayo before. Kasi po, ang um, baka nangyari is nag, kunyari nag-restore PCAD tayo. We press delete. No? If we press delete, mawala na po talaga yan. Okay, parang dinilit nyo na yung pinaka-lines. So be careful on that. Kung ganun po yung nangyari, we might need to re-upload the drawing again. Okay? Pero kung hindi nyo na po nagawa, Just check, no? Check nyo lang po. Ganto lang po mag-check, no? If I press pick sideline, okay? If I press pick sideline, tapos nakikita ko pa po yung sideline, ibig sabihin, hindi pa siya napipick. I have to repick it first. Okay? And then press right click. Now, here's the point, no? So, naka-turn on na yung layer lahat, no? If I press sideline, tapos nawala siya, it means that you repick it previously. 
Nandiyan na po yan sa pick layer. Okay? Ito na po yan. So you don't have to repeat it all over again. About the others, mo nagawa po by auto identification using the Excel. I I mean using the uh, uh, PDF or may problems po ba sa pag auto identify? Okay, so um, siguro po, I'll just uh, send my work. Send na lang natin yung work ko. Sa mga hindi po nakasunod, no? I'll just send my work. Save ko lang po dito. And then I will... Uh... I will uh... compress it again. So sa mga hindi po makasunod, you can paste. I mean, you can open. I mean, sorry. You can open this file that I will provide you. Make sure that you place it on a uh, separate folder po para hindi magwatak-watak yung mga picture. All right, so um let's proceed to the second part, no? Let's proceed to the second part of our train of our um substructure modeling. We will model what we call the blinding. Okay? So what are blindings? Ano po yung blinding? So blinding is used to um to model, yung model po natin yung mga lean concrete or yung mga gravel bedding. Kaya yung sa pinong pundasyon, nung soffit ng foundation natin, imamodel po natin yan. Okay? So it's a relatively small quantity. Malit lang po na value yung blinding na yan. And sometimes, nakakaligtaan na rin natin when we do the quantity takeoff. No? Pero here in the software, we are very particular in putting blindings on our substructure elements. Okay? Why? Ba't kailangan natin mag-blinding? Ba't kailangan natin mag-gravel uh, bedding palagi? Because, okay, because um, 
yung blinding element or yung gravel beddings, they are used by the software to identify the excavations automatic. So kapag yung substructure uh, element mo ay meron pong blinding, meron po siyang gravel bedding, automatic po si software na yung kukuha ng excavation niya. Okay? Automatic si software yung kukuha ng excavation niya. So we need to make sure that all our foundation elements have blinding. Kailangan po may uh, lean concrete or kailangan may gravel bedding yung sapin ng ating foundation. So I will teach you how to apply blinding. It's very easy. It's very easy. So go to blinding. Go to blinding. And then gato lang po yung gagawin nyo, no? Under the element list, create a blinding. Create a blinding. Okay? Pagkatapos nyo po mag-create ng blinding, edit the name of the blinding. Let's say this is a lean concrete. Okay? The thickness, it's up to you. Let's say it's 150 mm, 2 inches lang po. And then it's time to apply the blinding. So mag-apply na po tayo ng blinding. You can use the uh, basic drawing methods in applying the blinding. Pero isa-isa nyo po kasi yan if ever. So my suggestion is to use the easiest one. The auto-arrange. Okay? Auto-arrange command po. So yung auto-arrange command po, um, ginagamit namin ito kung sa tingin nyo na yung model nyo pong element has a certain parent entity. Ano po yung ibig sabihin nun, no? Kung meron kayo imamodel na, na component na structure na dependent siya sa isang or another component of the structure. So alam natin na yung blinding, your lean concrete natin, dependent po siya sa pundasyon kasi doon siya nakadikit. No? Doon nakapatong yung pundasyon sa kanya. Okay? So we can use the auto-arrange because the blinding is dependent to the foundation elements we modeled previously. Okay, so yun po yung idea ng auto-arrange. So I will select auto-arrange and I will select the foundation type na minodel natin. Okay, so nag-model po tayo ng pile cap kanina. So gagawin natin, yung mga pile caps po will be our basis for the shape, for the properties of our blinding. So I'll just select pile cap. And then the next thing to do is to highlight all the pile caps I want to apply blinding. Highlight lang po. And then press right click. Okay, press, right click. And then the software will ask you kung gusto niyo pong magkaroon ng allowance. Do you want to have an extension along the perimeter of the pile cap? Okay, as your blinding dimension, you can apply, let's say, 25 mm. And then press OK. So what will happen is this. The software will automatically attach a blinding to the soffit of your foundation. And the software will trace the perimeter of your foundation and add a 25 mm extension based on the one we specified. Okay, may 25 mm po na extension si software. So automatic po hindi na natin minodel isa-isa yung blinding using the line or rectangle command. Si software na po yung nag-trace para sa atin. Okay, so yun lang po, no? yun lang po. Now, let me just repeat the process. Ulitin natin yung process, no? Ulitin natin yung process para po mas malinaw. So under the blinding, make sure that you are on the foundation level. Under the blinding, go to um go to blinding. And then edit the name, no? Is this a lean concrete or a gravel bedding? Kayo po bahala. Kung ano-ano po yung minsan yung term niyan, minsan tremi concrete yung tawag. So anything na sapin no, ng ating pundasyon for preparation of our foundation works. The thickness is up to you. Usually 50 mm, no? 2 inches. And then what we will do is this. We will use the auto arrange command and click the pile cap. Because pile cap will be our basis for our blinding works. I will highlight all the pile caps. Highlight and press right click. Okay? And then... Press OK. Press OK lang po. Make sure that you input the extension if needed po. And then press OK. And magkakaroon na po tayo ng blinding sa ilalim ng ating pile caps. Automatic po yan. Didikit yan sa foundation bottom elevation po. 
Alright, so yun lang po yung part 2 out of 3 ng ating substructure works. I'll just wait for you guys to model your blinding and then we will proceed now po in generating the excavation. So madali lang rin po mag-generate ng excavation dito. Hindi na po natin i-manual. Alright, so yun lang po. If you have questions, feel free to chat me in our chat box and I'll just wait for you guys to finish po. Maraming salamat. Hello po. So, last part of our training. Okay? Pinakauling modeling procedure po na, EX, na gagawin natin our, our excavations. So, don't worry no. Matatapos na po tayo. No? Huling ano na. Huling part na. We, we are approaching to the last art of our training. So, up to 3 p.m. lang po tayo. So, again, uh, before I proceed, I would like to thank you all. No? Maraming salamat po for uh, being with me since 9 a.m. tomorrow. Ah, yesterday pala. Okay? So, we will be modeling. Magmamodel na po tayo ngayon ng excavation works. Actually, the modeling of excavation work is, is it's not a modeling, no? Kasi automatically generate. We will just specify the parameters that the software needs to know when generating the excavation. Okay? So, before I continue, first things, first things first, no? You need to have a blinding on your model. Kailangan po may blinding, no? Kailangan may blinding tayo. Kasi kung wala po tayong blinding, hindi alam ni software kung saan siya magmo-model. The blinding will be your at uh, the software's um kumbaga palatandaan, the software signal to generate the excavation. So make sure you already modeled the blinding. Now, under the blinding, okay, you don't have to go to the excavation no? sa blinding lang po. Go to draw and go to auto generate ex excavation. Auto generate excavation. So, you explain po natin isa-isa ito. No? Let's explain it one by one. So, for the auto-generate excavation, the software will ask you a series of questions, okay? series of informations presented in our screen. The first one is the type of excavation. Okay? 
Ano pong klaseng excavation yung gagawin ni software para sa inyo? Now, um, it won't necessarily matter what type of excavation you use. No? Pero we use this for classification purposes po. Usually, for pile caps, okay, for isolated footing, okay, ginagamit po namin it's pit excavation. Now, for linear base excavation, mga um, wall footings, no? wall footings, ginagamit namin is trench excavation kasi linear base po siya, mahaba. And for bulk excavation, no? yung mga kuminyari, meron kayong mat footing, structural, uh, I mean basement level, we use the heavy excavation for bulk. No? But again, it won't really matter. Actually, it won't really matter in terms of calculation. Okay? May konting pagkakaiba lang po silang tatlo. Okay? So, i-compare natin isa-isa. Actually, sa pit and sa heavy, wala pong difference. No? To be honest, wala pong difference dyan. Kahit mag-switch kayo ng heavy, parehas lang, kayo, parehas lang po yung makikita nyo yung generation type. Parehas lang po yan. So, parang hindi ba nyo lang yung pangalan. For the trench, it's somehow different. Okay? Sa trench po, pwede tayo mag-specify ng slope on the left and on the right side. Okay? So, pwede tayo mag specify ng slope kasi linear base siya. Kunyari, ito yung hukay natin. No? I can specify the slope here and the slope here. Okay? Kung trench excavation po tayo. Whereas sa pit excavation, we cannot specify for, per side. No? Isang slope lang po ang pwede natin gawin. So again, um, this is the limitation of the software. If you want multiple slopes, hindi po pwede. Just one slope lang po. Okay? So, for our pile caps, I will use the pit excavation. Okay? Pit excavation po ang gagamitin natin. Next, excavation-related attributes. What are these? Okay? Excavation-related attributes. There are three uh, items here. The first one is the unit depth in stages. The second is the width of the working space. And the third is the slope input method. Tatlo po yan. The first one is the unit depth of stages. It means that kapag po si software naghukay ng, uh, ng pundasyon, may option po tayo na hindi ibigay ni software siya as bulk, no? bulk volume. Pwede pong gawin ni software is himay-himayin niya on what we call stages. Okay? For example, meron akong hukay na... 12 meters, no? malalim. 12 meters hukay. Pwede gawin ni software, hiwalay, uh, hi, himay-himay niya every 3 meters. Okay? Para po kahit pa paano, madistinguish natin yung mga bababaw sa malalalim. Baka kasi iba yung costing natin pag malalim na masyado. Okay, so this is the unit depth of stages. Every 3 meters, huhuk, uh, ibibigay sa inyo ni software yung value. But, For now, hindi ko na po kailangan baguhin ito. No? Hindi ko po babaguhin ito kasi po mababaw lang yung hukay natin. 1.5 lang. So, so not, I don't really want na himay-himayin pa siya. Masyado na mababaw yung hukay natin. So I will skip this value. You can just uh, uh, make it as a default 3 meters. Won't matter pa. The second one is the width of the working space. So basically, if you want to have a, work, a workability, uh, a space no, for workability purposes, or uh, laying of farmworks dun sa sides ng inyong pundasyon, you may do so. Okay? So kung gusto nyo po yung allowance, pwede natin ilagay under the width of the working space. Lastly, the slope input method. Okay? The slope input method. So for the slope input method, kung naka-slope po yung pundasyon nyo, you can apply a ratio base over height, B over H. Or you can apply an angle alpha okay? or an angle A. An angle A po. So kayo po bahala. Gusto nyo po ba in angle or in ratio? So mamaya po i-fill up natin siya. Next. Sa slope position, so kapag nag-slope kayo, saan manggagaling yung slope? Sa soffit ng blinding, sa ilalim ng blinding or sa ilalim ng uh, tremi concrete or lin concrete niyo po or sa taas ng blinding siya mag-start. So medyo minimal lang yung effect niyan. So I'll just use blinding soffit para mas mataas ng value yung value ng konti po. And for the generation mode, we will use the automatic mode. Ibig sabihin po lahat ng pundasyon na may blinding lalagyan ni software ng excavation. 
All right? So just I just uh, explained everything. No, ulitin ko lang po mabilisan. Excavation type, if you have an isolated or mat foot, uh, if you have an isolated or pile cap, use pit excavation. If you have linear base excavation like wall footing, use trench excavation. If you have a bulk excavation like a basement or mat footing, I suggest you use heavy excavation. But Honestly, it doesn't really matter because you're just classifying the values. So I'll just use the pit excavation. Unit depth and stages is how the software divides the volume per level. So every three meters, it divide niya yung mga value natin. But I won't be touching this because mababo lang po yung fukai. With the working space, spacing lang sa palibot po ng inyong pundasyon. Slope input method. Slope input method, you will apply slope kung kailangan nyo pong nakaslope yung kukay nyo. You can also switch to angle. So siguro i-angle ko na lang po para mas mabilis. I will make it 85 degrees from the x-axis. Slope position, blinding soffit. Okay? Sa, start, sa ilalim tayo ng, so, ng soffit ng blinding, mag-start po ng slope. And generation mode, it is automatic. Automatic. And once you're done, just press OK. Press OK. Let's see what will happen. And the software will generate all the excavation works for you. Okay? So, mapapansin nyo po, lahat ng may blinding in-excavate niya. May mga column tayo yung sobra dito, hindi niya in-excavate kasi po wala siyang blinding. And ang ginawa po ni software is tin-raise niya. Okay? Tin-raise niya po yung um, layout ng ating file cap, ng ating blinding, para makuha niya yung shape ng excavation works. Lastly, kapag po may nag-overlap, don't have to worry about this. The software is capable of deleting overlapping values. So hindi na po natin kailangan isipin na baka sumobra yung values ko. Okay, just do the automatic generation of excavation here and the software will all do the work as long as you provided the blinding. Okay, so yan na po yung quantity natin. The software will also show you the backfill and haul out later on. So papakita po ni software yung backfill at yung haul out, not just the excavation volume. All right, so that's it po for my uh, for the last part of our training before we proceed to the report. For now po, I'll just give you time to do the excavation works po. Okay? Try lang natin pumunta sa draw and then auto-generate excavation. All right? So yun lang po. No? I'll just wait for you if you have questions or clarifications before we generalize our work po. Maraming salamat. Um, yung sa roof po, sorry, hindi kasama sa training, pero isama ko po siya later on. No? So after po ng quiz, isasama ko, i-brief ko lang po yung roofing. Um, isasama ko rin po sa recording para ma maano natin, makuha natin. Okay?
Now, um, after you do the excavation works, no, I just want to explain something, no. Explain ko lang po yung isang point, no. Um, balik tayo dun sa my project settings, tapos floor information or project information. Natatanda niyo po ito. Ato, um, let's see. Ato po ano yung ground elevation. Na kwento po ata sa inyo to, no. Na the ground elevation represents the natural grade line. So kapag nagkukay tayo, initially ganito po itsura. Ito yung pundasyon ko. Okay, pasensya na po sa drawing. Ayusin natin. Ito yung pundasyon ko. Tapos po may blinding ako. Meron na akong tremi. Okay. Si software, nagkukay siya based on the natural grade line. If this is the NGL at zero, okay, ang gagawin ni software is huhukay niya po from the blinding soffit pataas. So, ito po yung pinakahukay natin. Okay? Now, ano po mangyayari kapag binabal ko yung ground elevation? Let me just realign re it here, no? Paano pa ganito? I will put this siguro negative 1 meter. Ano mangyayari sa hukay natin? So, mangyayari po is mas bababaw yung hukay natin. So, check lang natin, no? Try lang po natin. I will just put negative 1 here. And then I will regenerate the quantity, the excavation works. So what I'm going to do is I will batch select all the excavation works and I will delete it. So I'll delete it because I'm going to regenerate the excavation works. So under the blinding, draw and auto-generate excavation and press OK. Let's see what will happen. Ayun po, mas mababaw na siya. Because we position the natural grade line one meter below. Okay? One meter below our ground elevation. Or one meter below our ground floor elevation. Kaya mas mababa po yung hukay niya. Alright? So that is the relation of excavations and ground elevation or natural grade line. So make sure that if you will generate the excavations, kailangan po mas specify nyo kung gaano ka lalim or gaano kababaw yung pundasyon nyo with respect to NGL pa. Sir, pwede rin po ba mag-set ng topo? Um, no po, hindi kaya ni software yung topo. Masyado at ang... Kasi ang meron lang po sa atin is flat, no? We consider the the works, no? the uh, excavation works as flat initially. So anything na may topo, baka i-compute nyo na po outside the software. So mag-set na lang po kayo ng separate, kumbaga ng base basis no doon sa excavation works natin flat po now meron po kami uh, i-release -re siguro na new software pero medyo matatagalan pa baka baka later part of next year pa it's basically for road works for um um topographic works no yung mga site development works pero on the uh, kumbaga pinag-aaralan pa po kasi namin so um Ibang software po ang mag-specialize on that kind of uh, concern po, yun sa mga topo. Okay, wala pong problema. Always po ba i-delete yung previous x cap kapag magbabago ng ground elevation? Pwede po ba i-click lang ulit yung auto-arrange? Um, I suggest i-delete nyo po, no? kasi po, um, number one, yung excavation works po kasi, it, it's a considered an element. no? It's considered an element. Ibig sabihin, it's, a, it's something. No? It's part of the model. Hindi po siya yung parang quantity lang. Now, if you remember, kapag nag-auto-identify po tayo, ang ginagawa natin, dinidelete natin yung mga previous elements because we don't want the new elements to interfere with the old ones. Kaya po kailangan natin siyang i-delete. Okay, so kung nagbago tayo, delete the excavation elements, tapos auto-generate po ulit tayo. Okay, maraming salamat po. So, um, balik lang ako sa aking PowerPoint presentation and actually that's it. No? That's it po for our training arrangement for modeling procedure. So, I'll just give a few, few more minutes to calculate and to do the report. And also, magre-review lang po tayo before the quiz. But before that, okay, before that, may ask po kung meron kayong questions, clarifications, or even suggestions regarding our training for the past two days po. Okay. Maghintay lang po muna. Baka may follow-up questions pa po kayo.
um, paano po i-adjust yung depth ng footing from top of pile cap to NGL? Okay. Paano i-adjust yung depth of footing? Now, if you want to adjust the depth of the footing, this is how it will go. No? This is how, this is the procedure. Um, it's just a, a combination of editing the elevations. Okay, ganito po yung gagawin. No? Pupunta muna ako sa column. Gusto ko po i-adjust, pupunta muna ako sa column, of course. I-adjust ko yung bottom elevation niya. Okay, i-adjust ko yung bottom elevation niya. Iaangat ko po yan. Okay, so ang gagawin natin, since this is a private attribute, select the column. Select the column po. Tapos po, edit the bottom elevation. Okay, gagawin ko, mag-add ako ng value, plus one. It means that I will raise the bottom part of my column by one meter. Okay, so one meter. So angat siya. Now, how about the pile caps? Siyempre, kung in-adjust mo yung bottom, adjust mo rin yung pile cap. So, pupunta ko sa pile cap, select the pile cap, and then adjust the bottom elevation or the top elevation, I mean, to one meter. So, angat din siya. Alright? So, that's how we adjust elevations of excavation. Kailangan po angat na uh, in-edit siya under the attribute editor. Um... Sir, yung S po sa excavation, sa blinding po ba reference niya or sa pile cap ko? Po. Yung S sa excavation. Um, sa ano po? Sa blinding po. Sa blinding po ang reference ni software. Kasi po, blinding po ang uh, reference niya in doing the excavation works. Can we combine all the drawing into one drawing? Like for example, ground floor and first floor. Um, all the drawing into one drawing. You mean the drawing manager po ba or the model? Because if you want the drawing manager, I, if you want the drawing manager to be combined po, um, again, we can only model one floor per instance. If you notice, foundation floor po, foundation lang yung model natin. But if your purpose is to view lang, i-view ko lang yung ground floor sa yung foundation, pwede naman po. Okay? What I will do is this, no? Ando ko lang po ito. I will go here, dito po sa gilid, I will press adjacent floor. Ibig sabihin, yung foundation sa ground floor, papakita niya. Okay? So, ayan po yung itsura niya. Now, ang gagawin ko lang rin is I will activate all the layers. I will turn on all the layers instead of manually typing each shortcut on the keyboard. Go here. And then press OK. Papakita po ni software. Ito po yung model natin on foundation and ground floor. In terms of calculation, pwede naman natin siya isort mamaya yung values per floor, per ground floor, per foundation. So wala po tayong problema in calculation po. So, um, that's it po for our training. So, ang gagawin ko na lang po ngayon is I will calculate everything. No? Calculate na lang natin tapos ipakita ko lang po yung procedure na ginawa ko last time. Yung, kag yung kahap I mean, ka kahapon po. Yung nag-view quantities tayo. So, panibagong calculation na yung gagawin ko. What I will do is this. I will go to quantity and I will go to calculate. So, the software will calculate for all the floors if necessary. So, press OK. Calculate na po. Okay, so remember, no, before you view the quantity, make sure you calculate it. Kasi po pag hindi nyo kinalculate, walang quantities or luma, no, hindi po updated yung quantities. So we have three methods of viewing the quantity. We have the view quantity. So just select view quantity, select the element you want to view. Okay, for example, gusto ko mag-view ng... Uh, Sa column, no? For example, gusto mag-view ng column. Select ko lang yung column and the quantity will be provided to you. As easy as that. Problema sa view quantity, kung ano lang po yung sinelect nyo, yun lang po yung papakita ni software. How about if you want all the quantities to be viewed, no? to be uh, presented to you okay? in a summarized version? We will use the view quantity by category. View quantity by category. If you press this, tapos po, you will select all the floors. Select all the floors pa lahat po ng quantities magpapakita. And then press OK. So the software will provide you these values. Columns, stiffener column, wall, door, window, lintel beams, beams, slabs, staircase, 
pile cap, blinding, and excavation. You want excavation per level or excavation per shape. Nandiyan na po yan. Okay? So, nandiyan na po ng, uh, lahat ng values na kinalculate natin. Okay? So, after you view quantity, syempre gusto nyo ayusin yung values kasi masyadong um, crowded. No? Masyadong crowded. For example, this one, excavation. Actually, ang kailangan ko lang dito is yung mga volume. Hindi ko na kailangan yung mga areas sa gilid. So what I can do is this. I can set the classification and quantity. Kung natatandaan niyo po kagabi, set classification and quantity. And then you will just select. Okay? You will just check the ones you want. No? The ones you want to show. For example, ang kailangan ko lang po is floor. Ayaw ko na ng pangalan. Kasi wala naman po pangali yung mga pundasyon ko. No? I just want the whole value on this floor. Okay, on the foundation floor. Also, what I can do is I can uncheck the others, yung mga area ng soffit, area ng sides. No? Hindi ko naman kailangan ng retaining, uh, mga retaining walls for that. I just want the volume of the excavation, the volume of the backfill, and the disposal. Yung, mga ba yung basic tray lang po na yun. So if I check no, the values I want and press OK, masisimplify po yung quantity. Okay? So, ganun lang po mag-edit ng uh, classifications. So, para depende rin kung gano'n ka-detailed or gano'n ka um, simply as gano'n ka-simple yung ating mga values. If you want, you can export it to Excel as well. No? So, if you export yung mga values Excel, pwede rin po. Makailangan nyo kasi naka, uh, nakapakita po sa ating Excel. So, ayan po yung, oops, wala pa yung Excel natin. So, ayan po yung mga quantities natin in Excel. Just remember that the values are not based on the formula. Instead, it's only merely quantities. Okay? Nag-copy-paste nag, uh, lang po at tinabulate lang po ni software sa Excel natin. Now, next. Um, another thing, no? Dinidiscuss po natin ito. Paano po kapag meron tayong gustong i-check. Okay, this is one of the good feature of the software. How do we check the value if correct? We will use the reverse check model. Reverse check model. Okay? Only the only thing you have to do is to select the volume or select the quantity, reverse check model. And gagawin ni software, i-highlight po sa inyo ni software lahat ng quantities. Okay? If you want, you can yung you can check one by one. Pindutin niyo lang po yung sa ang table natin, ipapakita sa inyo ni software kung saan po nang galing. Say for example, C14, um, medyo malaki ito, ano? 0.5, yung iba, 0.2 lang. So we might need to check this. Finally, to check the formula, you will use the view expression. View expression. If you press the view expression, ito na po yung formula. Papakita na sa inyo ni software yung formula. Okay? Nandiyan na po yung formula. Ulitin ko lang po. Check naman natin yung beam, no? Beam. Ulitin natin sa beam. Check ko po tong GV2. Reverse check model. And then, view expression. View expression, the software will show you for the calculation. Ayan na po yung calculation ni software. Medyo mahaba. Okay? If you want to view the uh, simplified version, the, the visual way, Click this button and 3D deduction. 3D deduction. Okay, 3D deduction. And if you press the 3D deduction, the software will show you the step-by-step -step deduction that was done previously. So ito po yung original volume natin na de nag-deduct si software ng column. Meron po kasing nag-overlap na column. Sa BIM naman, meron nag-overlap na GH3 and GH6. Priority po kasi mga horizontal. Okay? So, dinideduct siya ni software. Alright? So, yun lang po. And the deduction is based on the calculation rules we have in our PHSMM. Okay? So, yun lang po, no? And lastly, lastly, if you want to view the printable report, no? Gusto nyo po, iprint na, no? Okay na tayo. Just go to report and the software will provide you a printable version. Okay. Gagawin nyo lang, pindutin nyo lang yung summary by elements. Ayan na po yung mga quantities natin. No? Column. Okay. Stephener column. Okay. Wall. 
doors, beams, okay, slab, um, staircase, foundation, and excavation. Nakatabilik na po yan. Nakatabilik na siya. You can further edit this. Bago siya i-edit, nandito na po yung mga edit. Pwede nyo i-edit yung mga format. So I won't be explaining this, the editing of format. But basically, you just want to check kung ano po yung mga kailangan yung information. Baka kasi mga wala kayong kailangan information, you can turn it off po. Okay? So yun na po yung report natin. Lastly, lastly, kung gusto niyo po talagang mas maging detailed, sir, gusto ko i-print yung formula ni software, yung sobrang raming formula. Quantity measurement sheet. Nandito na po yan lahat. No? So the software will give you 110 pages of calculation of all the elements in our model. So good luck kung babasahin niyo po isa-isa. Pero madali lang po basahin yan. Okay? Nandito lang po yung ating... Um, and ito na po yung location, no? grid line po yan, A1 sa grid, grid line 9. Tapos nandito na po yung mga quantities, volume, the girth. So parang ganyan po. Okay, so nandito rin yung area for marks. Okay, ayan. So kumbaga nakatabulate na po, kung gusto nyo pong i-check one by one, i-print, nandyan yung location, the grid line, nandyan rin po yung mga quantities. So that is the finished product of our software the software can provide you this quantity summary. All right, so that's it for, for our uh, TAS software. Um, basically, the TAS software is a quantity surveying solution. No? It's a BIM software that is focused on the quantity surveying. We have a lot of BIM. No? I, can, I, can, I cannot rename or I cannot name all of the BIM available in the market. Because there are other detailing, there are other um, architectural works. We are the uh, we are the uh, one of the top uh, quantity surveying solutions, and kami lang po yung may automatic formula, automatic checking. Okay, that's why uh, some of the uh, BIM um, formats for some of the BIM files we cater. Pwede po nati upload dito and then ipa compute kay software and ipa check kay software. So uh, since that is not part of the training, okay, I, I've uh, confirmed to my boss, hindi po kasi part yung pag-present uh, pag ng mga BIM files, for example, Revit or IFC, hindi natin matatakil ngayon kasi limitation po ng ating software. Uh, hindi po kasi kasama dun sa ating um, trial license. Okay, so that's it for our TES software. So of course... Uh, I hope you find value po dun sa pinakita ko sa inyong uh, presentation. It's just a uh, small structure, hindi pa po natin natapos. Pakita ko lang yung finished product. Ito po yung finished product after uh, modeling the whole structure. Ito po yung magiging itsura niya. Kung may time po kayo later on, I will teach you as well yung roofing natin. Papakita ko po yung roofing kung paano gawin, madali lang lang po siya. So, ayan po yung pinaka-structure natin. So, it was done. I, I think I did it in a span of uh, five hours. Yung mga oras po ata. Baguhan pa ako nun, mas mabilis pa kung kaya pa. So, one part of our where one uh, extension of our software is pwede po namin ipakita to sa web browser using the Cubicus Cloud. Pero siguro sa ibang time ko na lang po siguro explain or maybe bigyan ko na lang po kayo ng sample email or sample brochure regarding the Cubicus Cloud. Alright, so that's it po for our training. Let me just check my chat box kung meron po tayong question. Um, Sir, yung wasted material, sinasama ba ni software sa quantity? Um, no po, we are 100% exact. Okay, for the wasted wastage, actually, it depends on the practice of the contractor. So, siguro, labas na po sa software, dagdagan nyo na lang ng percentage afterwards po. Sir, correct me if I'm wrong. If I set the quantity, uh, qualification and quantity, example, name, volume, and area, and export it to Excel, those three column selection will only be imported to Excel and generated in the report. That is correct. Okay, that is correct. Kung ano po yung sinet classification and quantity nyo, kapag in-export po sa Excel, yun lang po yung format. Okay, yun lang po yung format. Also in report, kapag po sinet nyo yung classification and quantity and then you 
jump to the report kung ano po yung pinakahuling format na ginawa nyo, yun po yung magpapakita dun sa printable file. Okay? So, yun lang po. Although we can still edit it, we can still manage it. Sabi ko nga po, uh, nandito lang po siya, no? Pwede natin i-edit. Actually, may mga template dito. Pwede po natin actually i-edit to, no? Set element type kung ano po yung mga quantities na gusto nating makita. Okay? So, we are not limited to the ones that we edit previously po. So, ayun lang po, no? Ayun lang po. Um, any other questions regarding our training? Um, we we uh, we finished at 2.30, no? And um, after this po, ang gagawin ko na lang is uh, I will give you a short, uh, maliit lang po na, na favor para sa amin. I will ask you to uh, fill up a survey. Of course, um, gusto po kasi malaman ng management namin yung part yung how the the software works how how the how do you feel about the software no kung is it very effective in your uh, in your construction needs sa tingin niyo po ba makakatulong ito and also i want to uh, hear you also no kung ano po yung naging outcome ng training na ito is the training kumbaga satisfactory level meron po ba akong kailang i, i uh, kumbaga i improve no do you think that the time management is okay is the pacing too fast or too slow? You may input it in our uh, uh, form. Po. Okay, so mamaya po, bibigyan ko kayo ng survey. After the survey, I will also review you. So ang gagawin natin, no, i-explain ko po lahat ng possible na lumabas sa quiz. So ang gagawin nyo na lang po for the next 10 minutes, makikinig na lang po kayo, familiarize it, and you will answer. You might perfect the quiz no kasi yung quiz namin is only multiple choice okay so yun lang po um before i conclude this training any more questions baka may questions pa po kayo or clarifications Okay, kung wala na pong questions or clarification, let me just proceed to the uh, to the survey that I want you guys to answer. So again, I, I appreciate you guys answering it. Um, it's not much, no? Uh, three to four minutes, masasagutan nyo kasi multiple choice lang rin po siya. Okay? I think there are only uh, six or seven questions. Tapos may comment lang po kayo about the training. So I hope guys, masagutan nyo po so that we can have feedback kung okay po yung training and okay po yung software namin. I just paste it here in our chat box. Maraming salamat po. Also guys, if you're done po in the survey, kung natapos yun po yung survey that I pasted here in our chat box, you may just uh, um, uh, signal me, no? thumbs up, so that we can review na po for the quiz. Okay, maraming salamat po.
Um, I like to ask if there is a schedule TME and TBQ trainings. Uh, wala po po kami schedule ng TME and TBQ. Um, the reason behind this, yung TME software is it's fairly new. Masyado pong bago yung TME software that uh, we're still working with some of uh, some of uh, the client concerns and client requirements para po may incorporate namin. So may mga developments pa po on the TME software. In terms of the TBQ software, hindi ko pa po alam kung may schedule. Kasi usually we're only giving TAS and TRB to the public because we think that these two software is the basic, uh, yung pinaka-basic uh, software namin na may pinakamalaking value in terms of our clients. Okay, so uh, I think uh, nakapagisagot na po ng survey. Again, thank you very much for those who uh, consider answering the soft, uh, the survey po. No? We, we appreciate it mo and appreciate ko po yung pag-answer niyo it's just a, a small survey and it will greatly impact our team no yung ph team namin to uh, to improve more we are assessed per branch no per department and philippines team last quarter to is one of uh, is considered the best service department of our uh, southeast asia region so thank you very much for that so for now um what we will do is uh, we will um now review you guys for the quiz. Review po namin kayo for the quiz. Uh, the only thing that you have to do is this, no? Kapag po, in ko, no? Uh, wait lang, check natin. Okay, so I will help you to, to pass the quiz, no? Pag in ko, no? Pag in ko, take note of that. Baka po lumabas sa quiz, okay? I will make sure everything, everyone will pass as long as uh, tulungan po tayo, no? Just... Uh, listen to the next 10 minutes that I will discuss. Okay? So, let's start. Um, for the quiz, for the quiz, I'll just go to the course to, uh, to the general workflow of the software. Now, take note of the proper workflow, no? yung step-by-step -step procedure po natin. We need first to edit the project settings after creating then import the drawing and do the drawing management, then we will model and input the project data and the software will automatically generate the quantity report. Please take note of the hierarchy, the step-by-step -step procedure. Project settings, import drawing, model or input project data, and then generate the quantity report. Let's go to the software. So for the software, so may one point na po kayo. No? For the software, um, the first step though is project settings. I'll go to the project information and um, sorry. And remember that, that for the project information, wala pong nagkakaroon ng uh, influence no? in terms of quantities except one thing, number 13. Number 13 po. This is the ground elevation. Remember, no? ground elevation will affect the excavation works. Baka tanongin po kasi, no? so it's the ground elevation. Remember that. So going to the floor settings under the project information, this is where we can edit the floor heights and the grade settings. Okay, meron po tayong zoning, may floor heights, may grade settings. And remember, if you want to copy grade settings from one floor to the other, okay? Remember, kapag nag-edit tayo ng grade settings or concrete parameters, it's only considering one floor, the one you selected, okay? If you want to copy it, from one floor to the other, use the copy by floor command. Copy to other floor command. So remember po, copy to other floor command. Okay? So yun lang po. Now, after we edit the project settings, magdo-drawing management na po tayo. So for the drawing management, we have five steps. Okay? The first step is to add the drawing. Second step is to delete unnecessary drawing. Just delete unnecessary drawing. Third step is to scale the drawing. Then fourth step is to split the drawing. 
and lastly to relocate relocate okay relocate the drawing remember those these five steps no again yung quiz po natin wala po tayong enumeration just be familiarized on the orders okay kapag nakaskill na yung drawing remember kapag nakaskill na po yung drawing usually on cut after you add the drawing or you delete a necessary drawing proceed to splitting kasi hindi niyo na kailangan skill so remember if the drawing is already skilled you may proceed to splitting if needed. Okay? So we have ilan na ba? I think four points na po ata tayo. No? So let's add, no? Let's make it 12 points at least. Now, um, after you do the drawing management, after you do the drawing management, what we will do now is to model the columns. So in modeling the columns, ito po yun, no? We press lang natin yung column. And then we will try to do the manual way of modeling muna. So the manual way of modeling the column is via point command. Okay, via point command. So remember, column is a point element. It means that we need to use point command and only point command. Ang kaya po natin gamitin to model the columns. It's point command. Next. Kapag beam naman po, beam is a linear element. Okay, beam is a linear element. If you will model the beams, lahat po ng line commands pwede. But specifically, what we are using is the line command. No? Pwede rin naman rectangle, pwede rin naman uh, three-point arc, pwede rin naman by CAD line, but ang pinaka-basic po is line command. Then after that, sa slabs, sa slabs naman po, slabs are area elements. Okay, So if we model the slabs, most of the commands, no? Most of the commands are already available when modeling the slab. Pero kapag po enclose yung slab panel natin, it means that, for example, meron akong framing dito, no? May framing po ako na kapalibot ng beam. If you want to automatically model slab on an enclosed area, you can use point command. Okay? Point command po kapag enclosed area. Baka po tanongin, no? You can use point command and an enclosed area. Kapag open po yan, hindi pwede. Unless we close it. Now, um, for the staircase, uh, actually staircase, we are using the custom staircase po. No? Custom staircase. Okay? Custom staircase po yung ginagamit natin. So this is aligned command. Now, before I proceed to the second day, ipaalala ko lang po sa inyo yung auto-identification procedure natin. The basic one. You don't have to memorize dun sa walls. Masyadong mahaba. So I'll just give you the basic one. So in the columns, ang basic po natin is this. This one right here. Three steps. Three simple steps. Pick sideline. Pick label. Auto-identify. Remember the step by step. no? Sideline. Label. Auto-identify. Hindi po pwedeng pick sideline tapos auto-identify kagad. We need to accomplish the first two uh, commands po before pressing the auto identify. So please remember that. Okay. Now, for the uh, next day, uh, for this day, ang tinuro ko po ay walls. No? Ang tinuro ko po ay walls. So in modeling the walls, okay, in modeling the walls, just a moment, clear lang natin. In modeling the walls, may pinakita po, or meron po akong tinake note sa inyo. No? You need to edit the category and material. Bakit po ulit natin kailangan mo edit yung category material? Para po kung masonry walls man yan, hindi yan humalo sa quantity ng mga in situ or pre, uh, mga uh, on-site cast concretes. So yun po yung process, yun po yung uh, um, ano natin, yun po ang reason natin. Kailangan po kasi um, ma-separate sila fully by specifying the category and material. So kung gusto niyo pong gawing uh, brick no or gusto niyo pong gawing uh, hollow blocks yung ating, yung ating walls, you need to specify that your category is a non-structural wall. It's not a structural wall. Pa. Okay? Very important. So remember, kapag tinanong sa inyo, where do we edit the category? Okay? Where do we edit the, the type of wall? No? It's under the attribute editor, under the category and material. So please remember that. Pa. Okay? So tapos na po tayo sa wall, no? Um, sa openings naman, it's fairly straightforward. We use door and window opening. We use the point command. Okay, so hindi ko na po i, uh, i gagawin particular. No? We just use the point command in modeling the 
door and the window. Going to the finishes, okay, going to the finishes, ang ginagamit po natin is room finish. Room finish. Okay? And ang reminder ko po sa inyo kanina, okay? We can only use room finish on interior area. Interior and closed area lang po. Please remember that, no? Baka kasi magtanong, pwede ba sa exterior yan? Hindi po pwede, dinadaya lang natin si software. Pero sa totoo lang, interior and closed area lang po pwede si room finish. Okay? Kung gusto nyo lang dayain, ang gagawin nyo lang po is gagamit kayo ng tinatawag na separation line. Yun po yung pandaya natin yung separation line. Ito po yun. Oops, sorry. Okay, separation line po yung pandaya natin. This one. Okay, so remember, room finish is for interior works only. But we use separation line to bypass that rule. Okay? Now, proceed na tayo sa Excel, no? Kasi alam ko lumalabas yun sa Excel. So, paan, pwede ba tayo mag-export ng finish schedule? Okay? Or ng Excel element list? Pwede po. So, pupunta lang tayo sa room finish, then draw, then finish schedule. Okay? Saka po tayo mag-import ng Excel. Okay? So, sa room finish, draw, finish schedule. Please remember that. Alam ko, lumalabas to eh. Room finish, draw, and then finish schedule. Right? Now, um, after this, nag, uh, excavation works, uh, nag foundation works na po tayo. So pupunta ako ng foundation, nag-model po ako ng pile cap. And the modeling of pile cap, I won't be very specific here, pero same lang po siya as column. The next one, nag-blinding tayo. So yung blinding po, again, this is requirement for the software to generate the excavation automatic. So kapag nagtanong, ano yung requirements for excavation? Ang requirement is blinding. Kung walang blinding yan, walang excavation. So imamanual mo yan, if ever. Okay? So pag ang kailangan ni auto-generate excavation ay blinding. Once we model the blinding, we can automatically generate the excavation by pressing this button. Okay? So yung mga quiz naman po natin, medyo may mga tips yan, no? How can we auto how can we generate the excavation automatically? Syempre, we will use auto generate excavation. So parang ganun. So after that, pagkatapos ng auto generate excavation, we're done with the structure. So yun na po i-end ng structure natin. All we have to do is to calculate and quantify. So for calculation, again, pupunta tayo sa quantity and then calculate. Remember, kapag nagka-calculate po tayo, hindi po pwedeng view quantity kagad para makita yung value, kailangan po pindutin muna natin itong calculate. Kasi pag hindi natin pinindot yung calculate, wala pong magbabago sa quantity. Kung wala pong quantity, wala pong magpapakita sa viewing of quantities by category. So meron po tayong two options, at three options in viewing the quantities. Meron po tayong view quantity, meron po tayong view quantity by category, and view expression. Explain ko na lang yung dalawang mahalaga. View quantity by category is if you want to view the quantity by categories. So from the word itself. no. View expression is if you want to view the mathematical expression, the formula, view expression. So don't have to memorize about these terms. No? Makikita nyo naman po dun sa pinaka word. View quantity by category is per category. View expression is for, is for mathematical expression. Now, let's... Um, press the view quantity by category. How can we edit the classification and quantity? Again, it's based on its uh, definition. Set classification and quantity. Para po, ma-set natin kung paano nag quantify or paano nag-sort si, si software po. So set classification and quantity. If you want to check for the values, reverse check model. So check Reverse check, okay? Check, reverse check, reverse check model lang po. Para i-track ni software kung saan po nanggaling yung quantity. Second to the last, second to the last, no? Um, if you want to view the 3D deduction, again, from the, uh, from the term itself, 3D deduction, papakita ni software yung visual representation of the 3D deduction. 
Okay? So, 3D deduction. Last, very last, if you want to view the report, hulaan nyo po kung nasaan, nasa report. Okay? Nasa report siya. Just press the report module and the software will give you a printable version of the quantities presented previously. So, that's it po. Yun lang po. Actually, nandun na halos lahat or lahat ng mga katanungan, you just have to familiarize yourself. And hopefully, kung nakinig po kayo, you will perfect the quiz. Sana naman po, huwag nyo ganang i-perfect, no? baka mahuli tayo. Okay? So, um, any more questions be before I post the quiz here in our chat box? So, one pick lang po ito. You can only take the quiz once. Pero, the, only, the passing is only 12 out of 20. If you pass the exam, if you pass the exam, and uh, provide the uh, the uh, um, assignment. Yung assignment po kasi gagawin nyo lang, itutuloy nyo lang yung model. Okay? Or uh, pwede nyo rin gawin yung sarili nyong bahay. Kung gusto nyo mas maliit, mas madali, pwede nyo rin pong gawin. So if you provide us those requirements, we will give you the certificate. Okay? The certificate is uh, processed by our headquarters. Hindi po sa Pilipinas nanggagaling yung certificate. Okay? Hindi po kami yung gumagawa nun. So that is per as per our company standard. So any more questions before I provide you the uh, the quiz, the quiz link po. So kung wala po kayong uh, time ngayon, pwede niyo pong sagutin siya up to siguro 5 p.m. So you can uh, answer it up to 5 p.m. po. Kung wala na po kayong question, I'll just paste the Pwede rin po i-provide yung final model natin natapos today. Sige po, ipoprovide ko na rin po. Huwag lang yung kompleto kasi baka ipasa nyo lang ulit yun. <laughs> Sige, so ipoprovide ko na lang rin po. Ipopost ko na rin dito sa ating chat box. So just a moment po. Na. I'll just paste the task quiz. So uh, I will paste it here. I will also paste for the satisfactory questionnaire. Um, hopefully po sa mga hindi pa nakasagot ng satisfactory questionnaire, kindly answer it as well. Okay? Sana po masagutan rin natin kasama ng quiz. Okay, so yun lang po. No? I already pasted it here in our chat box. Again, guys, good luck. Okay, good luck for the quiz. And I'm 100% confident na mapapasa niyo po lahat. Just remember yung full name po, wag first name lang kasi nagpapasa sa amin first name lang. Lumalabas sa certificate, first name lang. Okay? So make sure that you are you will be using your full name. Okay, full name po. Salamat po. Question, pwede po bang namin gamitin yung floor plans na na-provide sa training materials for the assignment? Yes po, pwede po yun. Actually yun, pwede yung gamitin. Tuloy nyo lang yung model, pasan nyo na po. Just remember po, no, yung framing plan natin dun sa, sa training materials, hindi po kompleto. Wala pong first floor level. So ang gagawin nyo na lang po, i-copy-paste na lang siguro yung framing sa ground floor, tapos adjust na lang. Yun na lang po. So I'm not very particular when checking for the framing plans. Particular po ako sa kung paanong method nyo ginawa yung modeling. Okay? So yun lang po. Just a reminder. Also, I will save this... Uh, project, yung kaninang project na ginawa natin, I'll just save it. So bonus, para uh, gusto nyo, ituloy nyo na po ngayon. So I'll just save this. Save as. And then I will uh, paste it. Okay, I will paste it in our chat box. So and po, na paste ko na po. Again, guys, good luck. I'll just stand by here. And if you're done, if you don't have any more questions, you, you may leave the room. Okay, maya maya po around mga thirty minutes. I will uh, discuss how do we model roofing po. Okay, salamat. Saan po namin submit? yung assignment and ano po yung kailangan namin accomplish dun sa model kasama po ba yung roof um, the only thing that you need to accomplish are the ones I did I, uh, I discussed so kahit walang roofing wala pong problema sa akin pero just make sure na kahit pa paano natapos nyo rin po or maayos rin po yung pagmamodel sana naman maayos rin po yung pagmamodel 
Kasi minsan po kasi yung may mga participants, sinesend na lang bigla yung model nila kahit wala pa pong first floor or roof level. Okay? Also, um, medyo lenient po kami on the deadline of your assignment. You can pass it uh, two weeks from now, three weeks from now. But I suggest pass it before the 15th of November. Okay? Para po... Um, para po makareceive kayo ng certificate because the certificate is processed every 15th of the month. Okay? Ipapasa nyo lang po siya sa email address no? kung sino po yung nag-send ng invitation sa inyo. So yun lang po. Maraming salamat po. Dalaw pong email yan. Kaya ni sisi me tapos i-send nyo po kay Sir Frank yung as your main na ano. Kung baga ako send nyo po i-address. Pwede po ipasa yung full drawing um, as long as it's not confidential. Of course, we value yung confidentiality ng mga plans nyo. You may do so. Okay? Pero kung uh, hindi nyo po pwedeng ipasa yung plano, maybe you can just uh, pass the drawing management folder kung ano po yung mga naka-attach or yung naka-manage dun sa ating PS. The idea is you want to uh, model the roof flat first per panel and then manually assign each panels with a slope using the three-point rule. Okay, so yun lang po yung method ng modeling natin ng slope. So it's very easy. Um, for review, you can uh, refer back to the video later on kapag po uh, in-upload ko na dito. Right? So, lalo po sa mga hindi naka-attend ngayon. So yun lang po. Maraming salamat po. Let me just check the chat box. Sir, ask ko lang regarding sa homework. Yung gagawin ba namin e based sa finished schedule training materials po namin? Um, actually, uh, I'm not very particular about the, uh, the detail. No? So kung wala pong finished schedule, you may use your own. Okay? Kung uh, gusto nyo po ibang finish, ibang uh, design, you may use your own. You can be creative. Uh, what I'm particular about lang po is... Uh, kung na-model po successfully yung tinuro. So kung na-model naman po successfully lahat yung tinuro on all floors, and uh, I think uh, you guys are eligible to take the, or to give uh, to receive the certificate. So maluwag naman po kami in terms of uh, giving the certificates because this is only the basic certification. We have a lot of levels. Meron kaming basic, intermediate, proficient, saka expert. Po. Okay? So yung pia-provide po namin sa public are the basic certification. Wala po ba para sa trusser? Um, actually, it's not part of the still uh, of the basic training, no. Um, I can show you sa trust naman po is pwede ka pwede tayo pumunta sa steel structures, okay? Um, hindi po natin ma-model yung trust sa assignment kasi wala po tayong trust framing. 
if I'm not mistaken. So ang gagawin ko, for example, gagawa ko ng steel structure, I will go to beam and I will create a steel beam. Okay? So magde-define ako ng mga sections ng truss natin. Let's say, for example, I will use the normal channel okay, and press OK. If you want to model the truss, this is a bit uh, um, advanced no? because this is the new feature of the surf software. I will create, under the draw, I will create a work plane. Ibig sabihin, magka-cut po ako ng section. Okay? Pag nag-cut po ako ng section, makikita natin nasa elevation view po siya. Okay? Nasa elevation view po siya. That is the time wherein magda-drawing po ako ng truss using the line command. For example, may truss ako dito. Magda-drawing po ako ng truss. Okay? For example lang, no? Ulitin natin. Magda-drawing po ako ng truss. Okay? Nag-cut lang ako ng section. Magda-drawing ako ng truss. Okay, pardon for my drawing. No, I'm just giving you a sample. Now, this is the elevation view. I can go back to the, under here, I can go back to the no work plane. So kapag binyo ko po yan, ganito po yung tsura niya. See? So ang idea lang po nito is make sure that you cut a section kung saan po located yung truss. Tapos po, doon tayo magda-drawing ng truss. So ganun po yung idea on how we model the truss. And for your example, you don't have to model your, the truss, no? Kasi po wala pong uh, detail ata ng truss dyan. Kahit yung roof lang po, no? Yung plane ng roof lang, okay na po sa amin. Even kahit wala pa nga pong roof, wala rin problema because it's not part of the training po. Alright? So yun lang po. I hope that uh, that answers your question. problem po any more questions from the from the participants i think we have uh, still 52 participants here nagpo provide po ba kayo ng training after basic level um wala na po kami training after basic level actually um what we do no after for our clients only is we set what we call project guidance so if our clients for example meron po ng nag-purchase ng client sa ng uh, ng surf, software sa amin ng client uh, the, so, the license is uh, included, of course, that the support is included, and then the trainings are unlimited. Okay, sa, sa part mo namin. It's part of our service. Uh, it's part of our service. So, actually, yung training po namin, basic training lang talaga. Ito lang po talaga. Ang difference lang po is, we will do what we call the project guidance, wherein kapag may minomodel po yung client namin, sinasabayan namin or ginaguide po namin sila. Because it's very hard to teach every uh, every commands here in the software unless po parang uh, actual na yung ginagawa nila. So sa actual kasi makikita natin yung bawat scenario na pwede nating uh, ma-encounter and how do we uh, model it on our task software. Um, for the uh, license, no, I'm sorry, I cannot disclose it. No, I, I, I'm not the one who is um, uh, giving the, the the price, no, for our license. So if you are uh, interested, no, kung interesado po kayo, you may contact my manager, si Sir Frank Shu. I've given the email, um, I've given the email on our chat box, or pwede naman po gawin nyo is reply nyo po dun sa nagsend sa inyo ng training materials. Okay. Also. If you think that this software it will be helpful, will be beneficial to you, to your company, we can set a demo presentation. So, pwede po namin i-demo, not just the TAS software, pati yung apat, no? pati iba, TRB, TBQ, and TME software, just to give no, yung the overall solutions of our Cubicus platform. TAS is just one part of our Cubicus platform. Actually, yung TRB, mas mabigat pa yun. So, uh, we would gladly um, appreciate us. No, I, we, I mean, we would gladly appreciate you giving us the opportunity to uh, present. Okay. And lastly, um, usually, kapag po um, gusto ng mga client, ng mga, ng mga, what do you call this, ng mga prospect client na mag-trial, pinapayagan rin po namin as long as nakapag-product presentation. 
we can even give you a free dev, uh, a free project guidance if needed. So wala pong problema. Just approach us if you think that the software will be beneficial. Okay? No strings attached, no? So kung gusto po i-try, please approach us. Okay? Um, let's see the other questions. How much... Oh, wala na pala yun. May team po kayo sa KSA. Uh, babalik po kasi ako ng... Kung po kay Ese, para gusto ko po i-discuss ang QB ko sa manager. Um, actually, uh, we only have... Uh, dito lang po. <laughs> um, baka po ibang branch siya. I'm, I'm not sure. Sa Middle East po kasi yun. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, kasi iba-iba po kasi yung calculation rule for, um, um, for each countries. So it's not me to, uh, to discuss po about other calculation rules. Pero yung software po namin... Yung magkakalat yan all over the world. Meron kami sa Europe, sa sa Norway. May research team kami, may research department kami doon. We have branch in US, sa Maryland po. We have in the Middle East, and we have in China, and mostly in the Southeast Asia region po. Okay, so uh, that's it po. No? That's it for our uh, training for today. Um, for those of you no, na tapos na po and you don't have any other questions, you may uh, you may leave the, the, the seminar. It's, uh, umaga, uh, pwede na po kayo magpahinga. No? Deserve nyo po magpahinga. We've been uh, uh, since yesterday, 9 a.m. So again, I appreciate you guys um, attending my seminar, our seminar, our public seminar, and we hope to see you on our future seminars. Marami po padating, okay? And also, we have TAS uh, trainings every once in a while, no? every two, every three weeks. You may want to uh, invite your friends, your colleagues, okay? your classmates, whatever, your workmates to our seminar. Again, everything is for free. Free lang po. Even the TRB seminar, uh, maybe on the near future, free lang rin po siya. We're not here for any type of solicitation or any uh, hidden charges. Lahat po ng pinoprovide namin are free. And it's part of our partner. It is uh, based on our partner partnership with uh, DTI. Kasi syempre, gusto rin po namin i-share sa inyo, of course, or i uh, ipalaganap no, yung uh, digital construction. Okay. For the TBQ training, I am not familiar. Okay, kasi hindi pa po kami nakapagbigay ng TBQ training. For the TRB, most probably meron. But I'm not sure about the schedule. I'm not sure if meron this fourth quarter or next year na po. Because kakatapos lang po niya last September 18. Nagbigay po kami. Alright, so uh, yun lang po. No? Uh, maraming salamat po ulit. Um, any more questions? Baka may questions pa po kayo or clarifications before I close this uh, Zoom meeting para po ma-process ko na po yung video. Okay, uh, if ever you can communicate me via email, email nyo lang po kami, uh, sasagot po ako. Baka may questions, may clarifications po kayo. Or even for uh, for if you are interested in the product, you may email us. Um, pwede po ako mag-schedule ng product demonstration sa mga sales namin para po mabigyan yung head nyo, yung, manage, yung management nyo, just a brief background. Okay? So yung mga product demo, usually one hour lang yan. One hour to one and a half hour. Depende sa rami ng software na gusto nyo po ipa-present sa amin. All right, so if no more questions, again, uh, guys, uh, thank you very much. Uh, from, of course, uh, on behalf of Sir Frank, on behalf of Sir Marion, we would like to thank you for attending our training. And we hope you find success in using our software. No, We hope you find value in using our TAS software. Marami salamat po. I will close the, uh, the Zoom meeting and uh, have a nice afternoon. Po. Enjoy your Sunday afternoon. Thank you.